Okay, so we have some more uh, useful calculus on tap for chapter four, and we're gonna talk about Doppler effect and the cosine effect. So you've got an ambulance. Uh, so once again, I'm not gonna get into what the Doppler effect is. And so if you don't know what the Doppler effect is, do a little research, uh, go to YouTube, watch a video on it, uh, and come back when you know a little bit more about Doppler effect. But basically what it comes down to is an ambulance is, is cruising down the road, and so you're standing on the side of the road and the ambulance is rushing by. Those are uh, lights and sound as it's rushing by. And it's going So it's like the frequency that you hear is greater when it's coming towards you and it's, and it's lower when it's going away from you. Now, the only thing that the Doppler defect depends on is the velocity of the source. So in this equation, this is the velocity of sound, this is the velocity of sound, and that's the velocity of the source. Velocity of sound, velocity of sound, velocity of the source. Okay, so, if you're standing in the middle of the road, you hear the you hear the um, the ambulance at a solid constant pitch until it slams into you, or until it slams on the brakes because it doesn't want to slam into you. But it's coming at you at a constant rate of speed, and then but the thing is, you're not going to be standing in the middle of the road you're gonna be standing off to the side of the road. So let's suppose that you're 10 meters off the side of the road and at the instant that we're gonna start going, well, so here the um, ambulance is X meters from you and is traveling at a speed, right now it's traveling at a speed of um, we'll call it uh, 30 meters per second. So now what's going to happen is as it gets closer and closer to you, what determines the Doppler effect is not how fast it's going down the road. It matters how fast is this shrinking here. Well this, this distance here, which we'll call h, is going to be Pythagorean theorem is going to be x squared plus 100 because that's 10 squared a squared plus a squared plus b squared equals c squared and you don't care how fast they're going down the road you care what is the change what is dh dt that's what you're interested in okay well we know that h is equal to x squared plus 100 to the 1 half and we've done this enough and you guys can pause if you need extra time we're going to know that dh dt is going to be equal to 1 half times 2x times x squared plus 100 to the negative 1 half and then we're going to need a dx dt. <clears throat> okay, so cleaning that up, I have dh dt is equal to um, x over square root of x squared plus 100 times dx dt, where this is the distance down the road or I'm sorry, this is the speed of the ambulance down the road, and then this is sort of the, the proportion of how much of that speed is in your direction. Now, this is also known as the cosine effect, because if you'll notice, here's my angle here, theta. This is adjacent over hypotenuse. X over square root of X squared plus 100 is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's cosine of theta. So you could also say that it is cosine theta 
dx dt. <clears throat> so whatever that angle is, that's how fast, um, that's how much of the ambulance's velocity is in your direction. Okay, so then if we, so, so what we'll find is that um, if we look at this equation, we have the ambulance, this is the frequency that you hear, this is the frequency of the ambulance siren, let's say 500 hertz. This is the velocity of sound, which is 340 meters per second. This is the velocity of sound, which is 340 meters per second. But the V of the source is going to be 30 meters per second times the times this ratio. So times x over x squared, square root of x squared plus 100. Okay, so if I do that on my calculator for x equals 100 meters, which is a pretty far ways away, I'm going to slam it in there as quick as I can. Um, and so I'm going to get 500 times 340 divided by big parentheses 340 plus um, 30 meters per second. Let's call it my, let's call it plus as it's coming towards us. 30 times 100. I'm sorry, that's uh, yeah, 100 meters divided by the square root of 100 squared, which is a 10,000 plus 100. I close that out and I get a nonsense number because I obviously did something wrong. So I'm not going to worry about it. <clears throat> you guys can figure it out under something a little bit closer, under little something a little bit uh, slower. But so let's say, well, let's just do this. X 100 over the square root of 100 squared plus 10 squared. That's, I can do that pretty easily. Uh, square root of 100 squared plus 10 squared. That's 0.995. So it's going to be 0.995. And then let's just um, <clears throat> do this again for one for 10 meters. If I do 10 over, <coughs> if I do 10 over the square root of 10 squared plus 10 squared, <coughs> well, that's going to be 10 over the square root of 2 times 10. So that's going to be 1 over square root of 2. So that's going to be square root of 2 over 2. That's 0 0.707. So if I want to do it Again, uh, 0.707 times 30. <clears throat> Making a mess as I always do. Okay, so we got 500 times 340 divided by big parentheses 340 plus 0.995 times 30. Close that parentheses, and I get uh, 459. I should actually get. Uh, let me change that to a negative because it's coming towards us.
540, what did I have before? Oh, no, I was right, 549. Um, 548, that's the right number. So, F prime at 100 meters is 548 hertz. F prime at 10 meters is going to be, I just got to change this to 0.707 and I'm going to get 533 hertz. Okay, so if you were standing right in the middle of the road, the frequency that you would hear from the ambulance would be constant all the way up to you. And if you could, like if you're a ghost and you're invisible and you could just like, and it could go right through you without any consequence, if you're standing right in this path, it would be a constant about 550 and then it would pass through you and instantly shift to about 450. Because you can't stand in the middle of the road, because you stand off to the side, you're going to hear it, you're gonna hear the pitch slowly decrease as it comes towards you, because as it goes down the road, because the velocity in your direction, which is what really matters, is changing very slightly. Okay, so then, Let's switch that around just a little bit. Here we've got a police officer and he's 10 meters off the road. And what the police officer is going to measure with the radar gun is this. The police officer with the radar gun does not measure how fast you're going down the road. The police officer with the radar gun is measuring how fast you are traveling towards the radar gun. So again, if you are traveling, um, if you are say 100 meters away, and I'll put that in there, And I already determined that's, that's uh, 0.995. And you're going, say, 78 miles per hour. 78 miles per hour times, or divided by uh, 2.24. So you're going at 34 point, well, let's just leave it at 78 miles an hour. 78 miles per hour. The radar gun is actually going to read 77.6. So the radar gun is actually going to read 77.6 um, meter miles per hour when you're actually going 78. So you get a little bit of a bump. So you get a little bit of a, so the cosine effect helps you a little bit that what's registered by the radar gun is a, just a tiny little bit less than what's measured by um, how fast you're actually going down the road. Okay, so what police officers want to do is they want to minimize this distance. They want to get as close to the road as possible. They want to get as straight a shot on you as possible. And they want to get you as far out as possible. So they want to see you as far away as possible and they want to be as close to, and they want to have as close a shot as straight as they can so you're traveling straight towards the radar gun from a long distance away to minimize the cosine effect and then also because the longer that you get a chance to see them the more time you have to turn on the bricks okay so now the controversial part of this um, lecture is in a, in a second, I'm going to give you a secret here, and uh, you can look on the internet and find secrets on how to get out of uh, speeding tickets. But uh, I am going to give you the my favorite tip.
Okay, I should be telling you guys this because I'm going to get into trouble. My favorite chip that is 99 tip that is 99.99% effective in avoiding speeding tickets is drive at or below the posted speed limit. If you do that, if you do this simple trick, you'll be amazed at how like you just avoid so many speeding tickets if you drive at or below the speed limit.